All right, everyone, welcome back once again to this Beefcast production. I am your casting host, Beef. Thank you for watching. We are once again here at Winter, or excuse me, <laughs> Assembly Winter, the Aces Republic of Gamers Tournament in Helsinki, Finland. We are in the finals. This is game four out of a best of five series. Currently, our Terran player leads us 2-1. We are here on MLG Shakura's Plateau. Let's get right on into it. In the top left-hand corner, we do have a very, very strong Korean Terran currently up 2-1 in this series. He is the ace of Team SCV Life. He is TSL's Polt. In the top right-hand corner here on Shakur's Plateau, we do have a French Zerg, an honorary American, and an extremely strong foreigner. The blue player, he is Millennium Stefano. So we do see that the Overlord is going to be making its way over here, going to be checking this spawn right here not exactly close by ground but close by air and uh, we do see that the barracks will be started here at 12 supply very standard right now from our Terran player last game we did see him do a two racks with a mako X and something that would be akin to this position right here or this position right here be able to float those down we'll see if that does end up happening on this map it is a relatively short rush distance between these two locations I believe that close by ground should be disabled on this version, so that's why Stefano did not check close by ground right here. Close by air, once again, is going to be slightly more favored for our Terran player than would be cross positions, for the reasons that he is able to drop pretty quickly, but honestly, cross positions isn't the worst on this map for a Terran either. With this one area right here, right here in the center of the map, there's only one central area that you can cross the map from, and the Terran player is able to very, very effectively siege up that area and make sure that that is the, uh, controlled by him until the, the Zerg can get these rocks down at these two different locations, and that'll open up some other pathways. But Zerg takes a very long time to kill some of those rocks, and we probably won't see those starting to go down until very, very late into the game. So we do see a command center going to be dropped over here in addition to no gas. So gasless fast expansion over here from pull. A little bit more of an economic build. A little bit riskier if Stefano were to go something like an early speed link push. Um, the Terran player would not be able to get out of his base for quite a while. And he's going to be uh, seeding map control for quite a bit of this. So Stefano will likely be able to take a third relatively quickly. But it, back at home for Stefano here, we do see a bunker rush. This is the fourth time in so many games that a bunker has started construction. Drone's going to be over here trying to chase down this marine while one drone is going to be taking out the SCV. And that is the end of that bunker push. Not a big deal. It's 25 minerals in total that that cost him in addition to the lost mining time from that SCV. And he was able to force a couple of drones off there and force some lings that Stefano did not want to have to produce. And, well, four lings, four lings is relatively standard for Stefano to produce at this time. But in some of the previous games, we did see, you know, 18 or 20 lings being produced. That's the indirect economic damage that we've been talking about. Gas is being used to start metabolic boost here for Stefano. He uh, is leaving one of the drones in the gas, so possibly looking to start there when that ticks around 100. That's what a lot of players will do, is leave one drone in the gas, and when that hits 100, that's when you start your lair. Other possibilities is that he could be getting a baneling nest, so we'll go ahead and see soon. We do see even a third command center going to be starting up here. So very, very economic build from our Terran player right now. Going to be relatively risky. The Zerkin is going to move up and he's going to see Orbital Command. And he's actually going to be able to get into the base. Beautiful job right there by little Zergling that could. I wish that he would get over there and do some scouting. No! He could have seen that command center. He could have seen it and realized, oh my god, this is so greedy. I could bust down that no problem. And instead, we do see that uh, because of those reactor Italians that will be coming out of that factory at any moment here, there is going to be a spine crawler dropped from our Zerg player and not even opting to go for a third base yet. Um, with the really, really delayed Hellions here, I would have expected that there might have been a third base taken by Stefano at this point. Operating off of three queens here, going to be able to get some decent creep spread. As soon as he's able to get the spine crawler down into this area, that's when he'll be able to start taking a third base, most likely. 
but at this point we do see that Stefano has gone all the way up to three gas, already morphing his lair at seven minutes rather than the much later lair of the past couple of games. And so that will signify that Stefano is going to be wanting to get some lair tech units out very, very quickly. Something like Nautilus could be very good on this map. You're able to bounce between these bases very effectively. There's a lot of room back here for the Mutalists to hide from Marines. Mutalists can be very, very good on this map. So we'll see if that is what Stefano does indeed go for, but with this Baneling Nest down right now, that is kind of lending a little bit of credence to my thought there. Hellion going to take a couple of shots from that spine crawler as they try to put damage in it, and the spine crawler is going to try to push out more and more here just to get some map control. But with that Baneling Nest, I would think that there could be something like Mutaling Baneling coming up very old school strategy something that has fallen out of favor in the past couple of months right about this time that this game was played about three months ago back in february i believe mutaling bandling was just coming out of style to be replaced with this stefano style as we refer to with heavily upgraded lings and infestors but we do see that spire coming up right now in addition to bandling speed so we are going to be seeing some mutaling bandling play here and with no third taken at this point, I think that the Mutalists are going to be used primarily to try to get rid of those Hellions for now, and then be able to establish a path for the third and probably even a fourth base to be taken very quickly. Or there could be a large Mutalisk push out and possibly even a bust onto the Terran here. The Terran player is producing tanks at this point. Siege mode is finished. So I don't think that the bust will be particularly effective, but two base busts are pretty strong against Terrans that aren't suspecting it, but as he knows that there's no third base taken right now, he's going to be playing ultra defensive at this point. Eh, even though he is going for double upgrades right now and still operating off of that three command center push right now, but the Zerglings are going to be coming in here, trying to get a good surround onto these Hellions, but with very nice Hellion control, Hellions are not going to do it, but they walk right into Banelings! Banelings going to be cleaning all those up. Very nice job from Stefano, and immediately, I would think, we'll likely see a couple more bases taken, but he instead produces seven Mutalists, but he's floating a thousand minerals right now. Eleven 1 hundred minerals. If he's not taking bases here in the next... 30 seconds, I would say this is going to be a two-base push that's probably going to be pretty all-in-ish. So we'll see what goes ahead. No, there goes the two drones. Okay, so bases three and four are going to be going up. The Orbital Command has landed on the low ground. Mutal is going to be popping any second right here, and they are going to be immediately coming up in this direction. Going to be able to get some harassment right there. Marine's going to come over there. They're going to bounce down here and get into the third base. Beautiful, beautiful map for Mutalist Karas. And at this point, the Terran player is not too aware. He does have engineering base, but no turrets can be coming up right now. Able to snipe a couple of SCVs at this point, making sure to get the SCVs that are mining gas. Gas is very important to the Terran at this point. He wants to be able to get out as many siege tanks and medevacs as he can. And like, look at that. As soon as the Marines were up there on the high ground, Zergling's going to be coming in right now, being able to put a lot of damage onto important units like those mules right there, hurt the economy as much as he possibly can. And once again, Zergling's and Bainley's going to be crashing back in, going to be putting a lot of damage on this orbital command. I think they'll probably even be able to take it out at this point. Mutalis is going to be the only ones putting damage onto it with SCVs repairing, though. Uh, I think it's probably going to get saved. Yeah, Marines are going to come in, be able to deter those Mutalists off at the very end there. But nice job from Stefano having to lift that, get any economic advantage back that he can. Being on two base against a three base Terran, not where you want to be, but with both of these hatcheries being finished right now, and beautiful creep spread, able to get between these bases effectively, able to get a couple of queens over there very quickly, and with the drone count all the way up at 62 right now, he's going to be able to transfer quite a few drones over there, and these marines are not being healed, why is that? There's no starport, it's 13 minutes into the game, and Polt does not have a starport, that very interesting. He's operating off of a lot of racks right now, but no starport. So every time these Marines stem trying to get these Mulas, that's going to be very permanent damage. Going to even engage 
on these right now, probably not the best idea. Plus one for the Mutilus, one one for the Marines, not a cost-effective trade. Very rare that you'll have a cost-effective trade against Marines. So a little bit unwise for Stefano to do that at that point, but no problem. Once that starport finishes, we will see medevac production going ahead and kick in right there. Plus two two finishing for the ground troops from our Terran player right now. And we'll go ahead and follow the... Oh, that's not the right button. Oh, that wasn't either. And we did see actually right there that 16 workers were killed by these Mutalists and Zerglings so far. Very nice job. And the Mutalists will be sneaking back in here right behind. And they'll probably be able to pick off at least another 8 or so SCVs before they're forced out of there by the turret and Marines. So we'll go ahead and see. We do see Burrow starting along with plus 2, 2, 2, and 2. Weapons and flyer attacks. We do see Marines going to be coming in there and stimming in. But like I said, with those big stims and no medevacs, that's very, very much damage. That's a lot of damage that these Marines are going to take. Beautiful snipe off on the reactor at that point. Able to pick off a couple of Marines there in exchange for a Mutalist. Not exactly the trade that you want to get, but nice job with that reactor. Plus 3-3 three, three going to be starting here for our Terran player. And that's really where it's going to hurt the Zerg. Staying on a Mutalist, conveying and Zergling style, if you fall behind in upgrades and you are not able to deal significant damage, then you're going to take a lot of damage from those Marines because that's really what he's going to be doing is just getting tons and tons of Marines and tons and tons of Siege Tanks. And if those Marines are 3-3 against Lings that are going to be 2-1, it's not going to happen. Zero armor on those Mutalists. Those Mutalists are going to get absolutely chewed up by those Marines. So another Mutal is falling here to the turret, not exactly perfect control, but manages to snipe that Vespine Geyser. Pretty important, not as important as he's on 3 base now. A marine heavy army is going to be very light on gas, the siege tanks in the medevac that he is producing aren't going to be in sufficient numbers to eat up all the gas that he has, you can see he's floating quite a bit. And both these players approaching maxed out armies right now. Nice job sniping off the tanks. So the way that this engagement wants to go, the Zerg player is going to want to roll in with his Zerglings and his Banelings and target fire with his Mutalists onto the Medivacs and onto the tanks. That's how you really want to do it. You don't want your Mutalists ever engaging with the Marines. You want the Mutalists going in there, picking off straggling tanks, straggling Medivacs, and let your Zerglings and Banelings clean up the Marines. So beautiful control so far from Stefano. It's very odd because we don't see Mutalists that often out of Stefano, but when we do, it's very, very good. So crashing in here from all angles, we do see the Mutalists are going to be able to get in there and get onto the siege tanks, and Banelings and Zerglings connecting with all these Marines in a beautiful engagement from Stefano, able to clean up pretty much everything. Still has a lot of Mutalists, 17 Mutalists with plus two weapons finishing up right there, and... Uh, I think that Stefano's in a very good position to take this game at this point. More Banelings going to be morphed in the face of Polt. Stefano giving him a little bit of the middle finger saying, I'm not scared of your army right now. Able to take out the two medevacs that just spawned. Thor is finally in production, but with good magic boxing, Mutalix should be able to take out those Thors as long as they don't have too sufficient of marine help. But look at that. Beautiful magic box on top of the Thors. Certainly the Banelings can come in and clean up the marines. And I think that Stefano's probably taken this game and it'll be just a matter of time. Back home, Hive is going to be starting in addition to Zergling production, and Zergling's going to be cleaning up a large amount of units over here. Zergling's going to be streaming in the front door, falling back as there are quite a few Marines going to be holding that in addition to a Thor, but down goes the Orbital Command, sending Pult back down to just two mining bases, with one of them about to mine out. A couple more of these medevacs likely going to get sniped over here by these mutilists. A little bit of poor unit management by our Terran player, but nothing too big to worry about. And so let's take a look here. We do see that Stefano has indeed tr transitioned into Infester. Very nice follow-up from the mutilists once these Thors come out, but nice magic boxing once again. Not the best, as this one Thor back over here is able to get off some large amounts of shots, but... Holt might actually be pulling himself back into the game at this point. He's very broke, but his army is able to effectively deal with the number of Mutalists and Zerglings that are on the field. Plus three weapons going to be finishing up, and I would not be surprised to see that... Excuse me. The Terran player will be transitioning into a heavier Biomech army with that plus three finishing up. Going to be focusing a lot on Thors and Siege Tanks in addition to those Marines. More so than you would see normally. Painling mines right here. 
I want to see this happen. And there it is. Taken out quite a few Marines. Beautiful job by Stefano. Stefano, in the meantime, has taken his fifth base here towards the center in this cross position from the third base of the Terran player. So we'll go ahead and see what's going to happen there. We do see another Spire has come down. So that is going to mean that Broodlords are going to be coming out in addition to being able to get plus three one upgrades for his air units. Zerglings going to come in with a couple of Infestors and Banelings going to be able to clean up the force that was trying to take down his own fifth. Not a big problem, but these supplies are relatively equal at this point. And I'm a little bit scared for Stefano. I, I would really like to see him get a few more units on the field, but he's trying to hold off until Broodlords come out. But with one mining base already mined out, and a second about to mine out, he's going to be down to just two mining bases, which is not where you want to be with a Broodlord Infester army. Uh, if this fifth base gets taken out, that is. Which, at this point, it's looking exceedingly likely that it will. Beautiful job, still using the remaining Nautilus that he has to harass any kind of units that Polt has available. And I'm not even sure if Polt knows he has these Marines. They're in kind of a... Okay, he does. Great. Who am I to doubt Polt, really? Who am I? <laughs> and so, getting a, a tech lab off of this factory right there was probably the biggest thing that Stefano could have done. That's going to stop the Thor production, that's going to stop the tank production, and the only thing he's producing at this point is 11 Marines at a time. And with Fungals, with Broodlords, and with uh, Zerglings, Stefan's going to be able to clean that up, no problem. Greater Spire is finishing right here in about 5 more seconds, so we will see Broodlords on the field in about 40 seconds. And with that, Stefano should be able to deal with any kind of army that the Terran player will throw at him. At this point, Polt is aware of the Corruptors. He did manage to spot those. And another scan right there, actually going to see the Broodlords as they're morphing. And so Polt knows that this is his time. He's got, until those Broodlords or are done morphing, things are about to get hairy for him. So he's going to make a mad dash, try to get the best position that he can to deal with those Broodlords. He's going to be starting Viking production at home at the same time. Marine's going to be walking up there, going to be able to snipe off a couple of those Broodlords right as they morph, falling down to just two Broodlords in general. Nice job, but might have found himself a little bit out of position right there as Banelings come crashing into the army. The Mutalists are going to be able to clean up the rest. The Thors are down, but the second contingent of Marines and a tank back there are going to be able to force the Terran player back. At the same time, drops have gone, well, not drops, but walking contingents of Marines have been able to take out the two remaining mining bases for Stefano. So Stefano, this is his last stand. He has no mining bases left right now. Maybe three, four mineral patches left right there, but these Broodlords are falling relatively fast and the Terran army is crumbling to the Fungals and the Banelings but Stefano has no money he's out of units at this point and he needs to be able to pull off a absolute miracle and it does not look like it's going to happen and Polt is the assembly winner champion taking that series three to one in the fourth game here on Shakur's Plateau beautiful job nice job to Polt and congrats for his win that is a nice prize pool for this and so game five will not be played there's a little bit of a troll on me too i thought game five was played because the replay pack had a game five just gonna troll me all day whatever <laughs> but it was an excellent series an excellent tournament thank you all for watching if you haven't checked out my other games from this tournament check out my channel i've done a lot of games from this tournament but we will be moving on i think i'm going to be doing the mlg winter championships the championships out at columbus ohio next and so be sure to check those out. Once again, I've been your casting host, Beef. Make sure to comment. Make sure to like and subscribe on these videos. Make sure to let me know how I can be a better caster. What can I do to make your viewing experience more enjoyable? I'm very new at this and very willing to listen to any kind of input that you guys have. But most of all, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for watching. And I will catch you guys next time.